Welcome back to the OHIO Podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Buckeye Boggs. That man over there, that is Brandon, and he's coming to us from a Cincinnati podcast, and I think he's about ready to, to go ahead and open one up and tell us where he's from and what he's doing. Brandon, tell us, everybody, about your podcast, my man. Eric, uh, good to be on the show. Uh, thank you for having me, first off. A uh, little you know, Ohio connection here, a little collab. Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, I did just crack a beer. Uh, I am part of the Go Beer Cats podcast. Uh, so we always feature a, a local beer uh, on our show every week, uh, sometimes two if my co-host is drinking as well. This one's called. This one's from a place called Sonder up by uh, Kings Island. I'm sure a yeah. lot of the listeners will be familiar with that. But uh, it's called Orange, Orange Julius, you betcha. Uh, and they don't make it that often. And when they do, you have to make sure you go get some because it is Is delicious. it a springtime lager? It is a – it tastes like – an orange juice IPA. Yeah. yeah. So it's, okay. It's hoppy, oh, yeah. but it, it is, it's like an orange creamsicle. Yeah. Don't so judge me. Delicious. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. It's great to have you on. I'm so excited about this because, um, you know, uh, Brandon and I have been working on something together behind the scenes and mm-hmm. we're, we're really excited in uh, next month to announce to everybody that there's going to be a whole lot more of what you're about to see right here uh, with both of our podcasts. And tonight we're going to concentrate on a series of shows that I, I used to do Brandon years ago when we were just audio. And now that we're video, we're bringing it more life. We're bringing it back to life. And that is a little thing we call border wars, where we talk about recruiting football, recruiting inside and outside the state. And so when you look at like, the border of Ohio, you guys are right on a significant border Mm -hmm. that you share with not only one, but two states. And some would argue that Cincinnati is a state in and of itself. So as a Cincinnati Bengals and Reds fan, I'm not offended by that at all. (laughs) Most of the people around me here in central Ohio tend to lean more Northeast or East over to Pittsburgh me, I've always been a Southern boy. I have uh, family from uh, Eastern Kentucky, so it was just in my blood, and I was raised that way. My daddy was a Red Legs fan, so I'm not offended by that at all. But let's dive right in, and before we dive into specific guys and recruiting there in Southwest Ohio, I want you to share with me and my fans how that Cincinnati fans, Bearcat fans, view Ohio State and specifically Ohio State football and be Uh, brutally honest if you want you're not going to offend any of us because to our north are a bunch of scumbags that like to rub it in our face uh so like I probably have a a little different perspective outlook on things because I'm I'm not uh, originally from Cincinnati I'm from Chillicothe Ohio which is much much closer to Columbus I would call it deep in the heart of, of Buckeye country um, all my friends from high school, family members, uh, very passionate about the Buckeyes. Uh, so instead of sort of running towards that, I sort of rejected it uh, and went, you know, went to UC. And uh, as far as I would say most fans, um, there's some old school fans. We'll talk about those in a second. Uh, but for fans right now, I would say there's not a lot of love lost between Ohio State and Cincinnati. Uh, I, I mean, what Ohio State has done in the past, I don't know, how, 30 years or, or whatever it may be is, uh, you know, you can't knock that at all. But um, as far as the football team, you know, kicking us in the dirt every time we go to uh, Ohio Stadium. Uh, I've been there every time since 2015. Um and it's not been fun. Been long afternoons on the football field for the Bearcats. Uh, so I, I would say most fans aren't well, fans of my age. I will say are not huge Ohio State fans. Even uh, when it comes to basketball, we played Ohio State to open up uh, the newly renovated Fifth Third Arena, a game that, in my opinion, the Bearcats had no business losing, and yet we found a way to lose. Um, it would probably if. We never played Ohio State again. I don't know if my feelings would be hurt because I'm just tired of losing to them. Oh, oh sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about these old school fans you mentioned, man. Uh, old school fans, they uh, they go Bearcats basketball, Ohio State football. Okay. Uh, I mean, 
I guess almost a distinct line. Like it's like 40 plus years in there. They've been diehard Ohio State fans forever, but they were, you know, in the prime of their life when Huggins was here and going to, uh, you know, Nick Van Exel and uh, yeah. going to the Final Four and, you know, his his run that he was on here for a while. So they kind of – they had that when, when Cincinnati – in, in the 90s, as, as far as I know the story, Cincinnati considered folding the football program completely. Uh, so if they wanted to get a college football fix, the only only show in town was was Ohio State. So they a lot of older fans still hold true to that for sure. Yeah, it's funny. You know, you, you brought up Huggins. I actually knew his dad. Went to his dad's basketball camp when I was a kiddo. Uh, and so, yeah, there, there was a time when there was a lot of Ohio State fans who were very jealous of the fact – that Huggins was coaching in Cincinnati. Yeah. Um, he, yeah. He's, uh, he was, he was at Ohio state. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, that would, you know, that was something that, uh, that I do, I do remember. And since I am in those and, and am in my forties, I do resonate with those guys in their forties down in Southwest, Southwest Ohio, who, who, uh, who remember those days in the nineties. I grew up in those era in that era. So um, interesting. That's a very interesting take. So now, Cincinnati is just flooded. It is probably, you know, I, I, I think Cleveland and Cincinnati, depending on the year, will have the most Division I talent in the state in football. Could be Cincinnati one year, could be Cleveland next, but they're usually 1-2. Columbus is becoming a very strong third recently, and uh, especially with the growth that is happening around the, two, you know, the 270 mm-hmm. there, Outer Belt. Toledo used to be that way, and Toledo is becoming very uh, a lot like Youngstown and Akron, and it's it's very old, and so you don't see as much Division One talent coming out of those cities as you do mm-hmm. Cleveland, Cincinnati, and now Columbus. But Cincinnati is still a hotbed, and if you are going to win at a high level in Division One football in the Midwest. You've got to have some kind of thumbprint in recruiting in Cincinnati. <clears throat> my guess, my next question before we dive into some individual guys in 2025, what is Cincinnati's, I guess, their recruiting philosophy? And how has it changed since Luke Fickle is no longer there? Because, you know, I, I knew Luke Fickle personally, uh, good friends with my cousin, Ryan Miller. And so, you know, Luke had a very – distinct i'm going to find the gems in ohio who mm-hmm. are three stars i'm going to develop the heck out of them and i'm going to send them to the nfl he did that at, he did that in columbus ohio at ohio state he did it at cincinnati and he's probably going to do it at wisconsin as well and i do see where he is recruiting the state of ohio still yeah but has cincinnati's program changed philo- philosophically in recruiting since he's left or is it still the same we are going to get the best of the rest in other words yeah, I mean, I think, um, I mean, with with it was hammered home so like so hard for uh, under the the fickle regime and the the state of Cincinnati is what they called it. Um, I don't know, maybe like a three to four hundred mile radius, you know, because you want to pick up the Ohio kids, but like you said, the, uh, the Kentucky, Indiana, and into like Chicago, even like that like area was was so heavily focused. I think. Uh, Satterfield has a very similar philosophy, but he doesn't have the ties or connections that Fickle did because, I mean, he, he was he was in the state of Ohio forever. Uh, so he had a lot of connections and like the inside on those guys that maybe weren't highly recruited. Maybe he's a three star, but you could, you know, get him in in the weight room and develop him and whatever. Uh, you know, he might have had the inside track on that because he had the relationship with the coaches. I don't think Satterfield has that here in Cincinnati yet, just because he's not he's not really from here. He's from he's from the South. Um, I, they say they still want to focus on the Cincinnati area and Ohio as a whole, like that whole like state of Cincinnati as they call it. Uh, and I mean, on the roster right now, I think there's, there's over 30 guys from Ohio. There's almost 20 or, or uh, 20, 25 of them are from the greater Cincinnati area. So, uh, you know, they've still um, held true to that. I think it's uh, still a long ways to go for developing th- those relationships with the coaches and the schools like uh fickle and and his team had here for a long time 
Interesting. Okay. Well, that's good. That's the state of Cincinnati as far as recruiting is with their philosophy. That's a great answer. Appreciate that, Brandon. Um, you know, so it, it, we, I guess would you say it's a fair statement then that more schools are making their way into Cincinnati and trying to make inroads there? I mean, we know Ohio State always is, but you see Notre Dame, uh, mm-hmm. you see Michigan, um, you know, Here's one that is, and I got to get, and, and, and we're going to end on this one, but gosh dang, Kentucky is coming up here a lot in recruiting lately. Yeah. Like they are hitting Ohio hard. And on the last episode of Border Wars, my co host, Aaron, and I, we talked about that, how that they're taking kind of the old Michigan State approach. Um, we're going to take whoever Ohio State doesn't want, and we're going to spend all of our finances and trying to get the best out of Ohio and develop them. And then we're going to beat Michigan with them. And then we're also going to make headaches for Ohio state. And that worked for years for D'Antonio. I mean, that's what he built his program on. I I think that, I mean, you're 100% correct with that, with the, with that philosophy. And I feel as though there was, I mean, there's some other things going on with Michigan state. We don't have to get in that, but like, it seemed like as, fickle established himself here more and he got those guys the traditional michigan state guys to come here uc went up michigan mm-hmm. state fell a yep. little more because i th- but i think you're right he like he was taking that same strategy um with recruiting here for what the four or five years that he was here yeah you you could you could see it as buckeye mm-hmm, fans we sure. saw it yeah. and we were all ecstatic because we're like yeah Go thick, you know, like <laughs> take down Michigan State, man, because they were a thorn in Urban's side. Like Ur- Urban never lost to the team up north, but gosh dang, he wouldn't lose to Michigan State. Yeah, you know, like it was it was crazy, and so uh, that was big for us. Okay, let's get into some individual guys here. Uh, I got I think five guys from Cincinnati who I pulled over uh, that I want to talk about. Uh, first up, let's talk about Cedric Works. Excuse me, defensive end, a, a, a uh, great recruit from the state of Ohio uh, that is definitely someone who Ohio State is definitely recruiting. According to 247 Sports Composite Rankings, which is the one I go with, Brandon, I, I like that because it takes all the major recruiting um, uh, companies and puts them into a composite, kind of averages it out, 247, mm-hmm. ESPN, Rivals, etc., um, Cedric works is, uh, considered the number five in the state of Ohio. He's 78th national to two, four, seven sports, 223rd in the composite. So rivals or ESPN needs an update here. Apparently considered edge rusher fifth in Ohio, 10th at his position, six, four, 220 pounds from Northmont high school in Clayton, Ohio, just outside of Cincinnati. Um, this is a young man who, who has an offer from Cincinnati has an offer from Ohio State. What are you hearing about his recruitment, and what are your thoughts on Mr. Cedric Works? I mean, good size for sure. Um, the The high school is one I'm not really familiar with. Nor- Northmont, um, not not one of the you know the premier or like powerhouse high school football teams around here. Um, but I I also saw um, I don't I don't think you mentioned this, but I saw Georgia get involved there as well. Um, I don't know when, when Georgia gets involved, you know, it's, <laughs> it's yeah. going to be, yeah, you, you know, he's, yeah. He's, so, I mean, you know, great size. Um, but uh, I, I think when, I mean, now that Ohio state Georgia is going to get involved, I know he has some offers from like Marshall and maybe a couple uh, ACC schools as well. But, uh, I would say that his recruiting is not done yet. I'd say I'd look for some more schools to get involved there as well. Yeah. And he 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 might be more considered Dayton, okay. But yeah. I still threw him in here because when you're the top five in the state and you're from mm-hmm. Southwest Ohio, and you got an offer from Cincinnati and Ohio State, we're going to talk about him, right? Yeah. Like this is this is someone who Ohio State wants. And nine times out of ten, if Ohio State wants a kid who's in the top ten in the state of Ohio, he ends up at Ohio State. That's not always the case. There are some outliers here. Oh. But it, you know, though traditionally that happens. But all right, so let's move on. This one is interesting. We have got Quentin Simmons Jr. Mm-hmm. He is the sixth ranked kid in the class of uh, 2025 in the state of Ohio. 
with a um, commitment already already in. He's committed to that team we just mentioned a little bit ago, Kentucky. Six foot, 175 pound wide receiver from uh, Winthrow High School in Cincinnati. Um, I I haven't spent a ton of time diving into his recruitment or his film or anything because to be honest with you with you Brandon when he already committed to Kentucky I kind of just took him off the radar from yeah. my concentration but this is the the concern that I was talking about this is that type of kid that that used to go to Michigan State used to go to Cincinnati when Fick was there now he's in Kentucky yeah, I mean, if Withrow, I mean, that's that's one of the uh, bigger high schools here in in the city. Uh, I would I would guess that Withrow High School is maybe four miles from campus, maybe. Uh, and Kentucky, like they've, like you said, they they are creeping in more and more to the Cincinnati area. I mean, there's there was a, a I believe a 2024 commit, uh, a running back for UC who was committed to UC and just flipped to Kentucky not that long ago. Um, so that's uh, sort of a pattern that uh, I'm remembering here as well, that uh, a guy commits to UC or something, and that's like uh, the green flag for UK to come in and try to flip the flip the commit. That's that's happened more than one uh, time here in the last two or three years. Interesting. Okay. All right, let's move on to the guy I really want to talk about. <laughs> I mean – I love Justin Hill, dude. Dude is, he, to me, has first-round NFL talent written all over him. I actually believe, and this is why it, when you get into recruiting and you've you've watched film and you have a guy like I have with Aaron, my co-host, who literally watches film for fun. Like, yeah. he's, he gets home from work puts on the YouTube and kicks his feet back and watches high school film for hours. And it's like, why? You know, like you're not getting paid for this. And I really enjoy it. He's in love with this guy's film as well. His, his explosion is incredible. Could be a defensive end, could be a linebacker. Um, I would love to see him at linebacker because I just would love to see him run downhill and just blow people up. 6'3", 225, or excuse me, 220 pounds, ranked 158th nationally, uh, 19th at his position. I, I'll be honest with you, Rand, I think that those rankings are not good enough. In fact, if I were to kind of redo my rankings, he's top three for me in the state of Ohio. I love Justin Hill's game. What's your thoughts on Mr. Hill? Uh, I mean – the I mean for the size like I, like he great speed. Uh, Winton Woods is producing more and more athletes uh, like this. Um, definitely solid football program up there. Uh, last I heard, we didn't have a, a great relationship with their with their head coach up there. Oh. Um, I don't know if that's smoothed over yet or not. Uh, but uh, th- I mean that's he's like the the peak of what they can produce out of out of Winton Woods. Uh, I. I would guess. I mean, just I I have read uh, about him and kind of uh, you know watch out of the corner of my eye. But I, I would guess that he he is going to be an Ohio State Buckeye for sure. Uh, right. That's just that's just my guess. But uh, definitely solid get. And like like you said, can, could probably play either of those positions. Uh, he's playing the edge rusher now, or did in high school there. But uh, conversion to a linebacker might be might be a solid choice for him. Given his speed, man, when you watch his film, I'm like. This guy is just, he explodes. Like, he jumps off the film at you, man. Like, his athleticism just screams to me, throw him at linebacker and just let him blow people up. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. that's what he could do. Um, yeah, you know, the, the school I'm worried about the most with him, believe it or not, is Kentucky. They have really recruited him hard. He's felt lots of love. And if and what really scares me about this, and maybe you can answer to this, this is just kind of a side tangent here, is the one thing Kentucky can offer that Ohio State cannot is they can say you're going to get to play in the SEC. You you get to lose to Tennessee and Alabama and Georgia every year. Oh, it'll be so fun. You're going to make all our Kentucky listeners mad. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we have any, but you know, you know. Um, yeah, I know. I just, I just, 
I feel like that's something that you can you can attest to, you can recruit to. But uh, no, I'm glad you said that. I'm feeling good about that one. This one I'm not feeling good about, man. I, Ohio State is fans who follow recruiting are very split on Luca Gilbert. Ohio State's after a couple bigger name recruits at the tight end position. Mm-hmm. They're going through a phase right now where I think they're looking more for a tight end who fits the mold of who we just had and a big body who's blocker first can surprise you with a little bit of athleticism in the passing game. Not going to be a burner, not a not a hybrid wide receiver, mm-hmm. which Luca Gilbert, although he's got incredible height, is is looks more like a wide receiver when you throw on the film than a traditional tight end. And maybe that's what's happening here. But Ohio State, they're interested. I don't know that they've they they've they've offered, but I don't know if it's a committed committable offer is the thing that I'm hearing about okay. Luca. So that, that might be a little bit interesting, but the dude's six, seven. Yeah. And here's, what's crazy. He makes 233 pounds. Look, look small. Cause he's so tall. Right. Yeah. So, uh, this, this to me is a kid. If he doesn't go to Ohio state, Cincinnati has got to gobble him up, man. He's right there in your backwoods too. Like, uh, Lakota West, you know, mm-hmm. is, is right there for you guys. I'm sure you guys, I don't, I didn't look at the roster, but I'm bad. I'm betting you have somebody from Lakota West or Lakota East on your roster right now. It, it, like it's, I guarantee it. We, we would have to, both of those very large districts, uh, you know, just out, just along the outer belt. Uh, I mean, four, I think, is he like top 10 tight end in the country? Not just the state. Uh, 16th, according to the composite. Okay. Okay. Uh, on the composite. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, definitely, I mean, we, uh, we definitely like a good tight end at at UC. Uh, we put a, I've heard put a decent amount of them in the league. Uh, one of them's doing all right. Uh, dating Taylor Swift and whatnot, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's up to to debate depending on who you talk to. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, if if uh, this this is like this guy's like a, maybe like another example. If if Ohio State you know reaches their like the, a more national uh, thumbprint that that they that they have, and this is uh, you know a, a four star that uh, would maybe go to uh, Iowa, Michigan State, something like that. If Cincinnati can, can get in there, that's definitely the the prototype uh, that we'd be looking to recruit for sure. One more guy I want to talk to, and this is because this guy I have I know I know zero I know nothing about. Um, number sixteenth in the country, he kind of just showed up on my radar today as I was prepping for the show. Gordy, and it, I think it's Salstead, I believe. But he, you know, he, famous school Saint X. Everybody knows yeah. it. I mean, literally, if you're if you're anywhere in the Midwest, you know about this high school. Um, and I don't even know if the picture I grabbed is really the kid, but I thought it was a great picture, and I'm kind of hoping it's him <laughs> because that's a phenomenal picture, young man, if that's you. And if it's not, whoever this young kid is, like, sell this picture, dude. You, I mean, this is a phenomenal picture. I love the excitement <laughs> I see on the face, man. I love that. This, to me, screams what Ohio high school football is all about, that picture right there. I love it. If you don't know anything about Gordy, I, you know, I don't feel bad because literally I just threw him on here. 6'5", 240 pounds, so this is obviously, if this is him, this is a, a, a trim fit 240. Mm-hmm. Um, and defensive end, and I, I don't know anything other than the fact he plays at St. X, and that immediately says if you're one of the best kids on St. X, you probably are going to be a very good Division One college football player. Yeah, I mean, it looks like his – I mean, he's got offers all over the place. Minnesota, uh, he was – he was at Rutgers for junior day. Um, definitely maybe one of those guys you haven't heard about yet, but uh, you will be here very shortly. Um, I, St. X is always always in the mix uh, down here, whether it's they're playing Moeller or, or Elder or anyone else in, in that league. Um, people, I mean, they'll, they'll fill Nipper Stadium when – or they have in, in past years when it's when it's St. X and Moeller or, or whoever. So uh, definitely – uh, definitely want to keep an eye on as a probably a, a rising rising stock type of guy. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's someone I'm going to be diving into a little bit more. Um, but uh, yeah, that that's phenomenal. Um, 
all right, so we went, we went through them a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about Kentucky now. We, we've mentioned them, and we're going to throw Louisville in this as well because they're very close to where you guys are at. And I think, depending on what happens to the ACC, Cincinnati-Louisville might rekindle conference rivalry down the road. Like, that's something that could happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to Cincinnati recruiting and football, you know, Ohio State, I understand, is on a different level. I get that. Kentucky, Louisville, more on the same level. And now that you guys are in the Big 12, I feel like is you can walk into any kid's living room and say, we are power five, four, however you want to look at it. We are power four football. Louisville and Kentucky comes in. They're saying the same thing. They can't say – we're power five, Cincinnati's not. They can't say that anymore. Has that changed? And what what's it like in Cincinnati with Kentucky, Louisville, trying to come in and recruit basically the same group of kids that the Bearcats are? Yeah, I mean, it, I, it's, I mean, it's not even just for for football. I mean, it creeps into to basketball as well. Uh, I mean, moving to the Big Twelve was was such a giant move for for UC. I mean, in whatever direction you turn here, you were either in Big Ten or SEC country, um, no matter what way you went. So when, when you know, they, the Big 12 finally decided to expand and, and we got that, I think that, that helps a lot. And, you know, with that comes um, an indoor practice facility that there is being constructed right now. Um, it's, it's not just, uh, you know, hey, we're not we're, – we're in the Big 12 now, but it's also, you know, the facilities, the um, – Nike deal or, or what have you, there's, there's a lot more things going into it. Uh, the NIL, uh, I mean, I'm sure we have a long way to go to compare to a lot of schools, especially Big Ten or SEC schools, but it's something that they're definitely um, on board and raising money for. We have, you know, uh, Travis and uh, Jason Kelsey coming to Nipper Stadium uh, in two weeks to do a live show of their podcast, and uh, oh, there you go. Uh, proceeds are going towards the NIL fund. And then right um, after that will be you and I, and we'll come in. <laughs> right, yes, yeah. We'll Pick just, up the we'll, scraps. We'll, we'll take over in, at the intermission while they grab a beer or, or do whatever it is that they need to do. Um, so, yeah, we got – I mean, it's it's just like – it's it's a matter of probably, you know, like how early you get to the kid and, and I mean, it's sort of like class of recruiting stuff, how the uh, development, the relationships that you build. With Satterfield being, a, you know, a, a, a guy, not a local guy, not from Ohio even – I mean, if you look at our recruits that we have for 2025, we have, I think we only have four right now, two of them from Ohio, two of them from Georgia, because that's, Mm -hmm. you know, the stomping ground that he's a little more used to. For 2024, you know, for this next year, it's it's a little different. Um, uh, Again, a lot of uh, Ohio guys, of course, a couple of them from Columbus. I see, you know, Lewis center and some other places. That's where um, I live. So yeah. Yeah. They're very nice. Need, um, you're getting, you're getting the, 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 again, these D'Antonio used to come here to Delaware County all the time, all the yeah. time. And, and so that is, you're getting that, that next tier big 10 kid. And I all I don't know, Brandon. I just thought when 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 Cincinnati made the move to the Big Twelve, I was like very curious. Like, would the recruiting stay like it was, or are we going to try to be more national now? And uh, you know, with that region, if you look at you think about it regionally, you know, the Big Twelve being more out west, you know. Mm-hmm. I, has those has those recruiting doors opened all, or is it is it more like Ohio and go south? That's kind of the direction and the philosophy of what you're seeing. That that's from from now. Like I said, you know, there maybe you know year one of the Big Twelve did not go well for us on the football field. Um, our only Big Twelve win being Houston, if you can even count that, because they were new in the league this year as well. Uh, but that's again with the regime change, uh, Satterfield taking over. Uh, um, first year there, first year in the Big 12, we had a, a perfect storm to, to not do well at all. And uh, that doesn't give us an excuse for losing to Miami, Ohio, but we won't talk about that. Yeah, let's not uh, mention that. Yeah, I, but um, I, right now it's it's Ohio and South. 
and I, I think that's a reflecting of, of the coaching. Um, Ohio State, <clears throat> excuse me, Ohio State fans will remember uh, Kerry Combs, who's uh, legendary high school coach around these parts. Um, coached here, coached at Ohio State. I think he was in the NFL for a little bit as well. Yep. Um, he's he's was a the spe- or was he the DB coach last year? And I think he's he's moved mm-hmm. to special teams this year or some combination of the two. And I mean he's he's probably the the driving force between. Uh, or for the Ohio recruiting. I mean, he's, okay. he's he's the guy that's been here for a while, has those relationships, and gets you in the door. So, uh, But to answer your original question, yeah, right now I, I don't see the move out west. I don't see a lot of Texas kids, for example, you know, coming in or, or Oklahoma or, or whatever it may be with the, the move west to Big 12 and going even further west next year with the four other schools coming into the Big 12. Um, you know, I think that'll take some time to get into those – uh, those households and, you know, develop a name that they recognize like they do the Iowa States, the, you know, Kansas, Kansas States, whoever. Um, for, so Ohio and South is what it looks like right now. It's not a, it's not a bad starting point in all honesty, you know? Yeah. Um, one final question for you, Brandon. Um, realistically, as a, as a fan base, as a fan, what do you believe the ceiling for Cincinnati football is? Now, we know what Cincinnati basketball, the ceiling can be national championship. Like, we, we know that. What's the ceiling for Cincinnati football now that you're in the Big 12? Um, I mean, we – I think ceiling and expectations are, are different as, I, as I'm thinking about your question. Um, I think a lot of fans sometime in the next – I don't know, decade would expect to be back in the college football playoff, especially with um, the expanded format now. Mm -hmm. Uh, And with we've had two different coaches get us to what we would call the peak of our football program with Brian Kelly doing it in in 09 and the undefeated going to the the Orange Bowl for the first time and then to the um, um, college football playoff and a couple of years ago under fickle it can be done here it's not a not an easy thing it's, it's not an every year thing like you expect to go like like ohio state fans probably would call it a, a, a not a wasted but a bad season if they're not in the mix to be you know one of those top four teams uh i think we our ceiling is every once in a while going back to uh the college football playoff um always in the mix for a um, New Year's Six Bowl, whatever that may look like, and, and going forward, um, and I mean, we got a long way to go to get there right now. But it's it's been proven by two different coaches that if you do things, I think they both had very similar formulas to to get that to uh, to get us to those points. So I think we can get back there. I don't think we're uh, we're going to be a every year team, but. Sure would be nice to, to go back there again. No, I – so <clears throat> there's a lot – there is a – I won't say a lot. There is a strong vocal portion of Ohio State fans who would like to see Cincinnati in the Big Ten. I'm not one of them because I don't I don't want Cincinnati to become uh, someone else we have to worry about in recruiting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, – yeah, there, there's definitely a, a vocal portion of this fan base who's like, Cincinnati should be in the Big Ten, and, and we would love to have them here. Um, that being that being said, I think that there's, you are dead on on those expectations. Like, there will be a day, maybe in our lifetime, we'll be doing a preview game where Cincinnati and Ohio State are matching up in the college football playoff. And that day will be incredibly interesting. A lot of people don't know this. If you go back, I believe it was the 2002 National Championship season. Cincinnati had Ohio State beat. Time out. That's right before we started recording. You're like, are you ready? And I was like, yeah, I'm ready. But I I, I scooted over here. Four scoring chances. One UC heartbreaker. This is the Cincinnati Enquirer from that game, from that day. That um, that's that's like one of the bigger what ifs. I just have that laying around all my memorabilia here. I haven't found a, I don't know what to do with this, whether to burn it or to keep it. But yeah, that was that was a, a hell of a game uh, in O two when what uh, one day when we have that a was crazy. 
one day when we have a giant studio somewhere for the joint uh, operation that we're going to be a part of, that one might be hanging in your office or my office one day. That yeah. would that would be all right. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Um, do you have any questions for me, Brandon? Um, I, I mean, just kind of to, to flip it, like, you, you know, the – the thought that there's some Ohio State fans that would like to see UC in the Big Ten, that's that's pretty interesting to me. Um, just like, I, I mean, I, I know what some of the, the more vocal um, Ohio State fans think of UC, but I, I would like to, you know, hear a maybe a more level-headed guy tell me what, <laughs> what they think uh, about, you know, UC, you know, just football or, 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 you know, the athletics in general. Yeah, no, this, that's thank you, thank you uh, for the question. Level-headed is probably the first. You're probably the first person who's ever said that to me because uh, most people know me as definitely not being level-headed Ohio State fan. <laughs> um, I no, it's funny. Either Ohio State fans love me and love our channel, or they hate me and hate the channel because they think I'm too controversial. Because I literally speak, I speak truth, and sometimes I speak things that I we, you know, we make. Uh, like for instance, I did a video where Ryan Day took his son RJ on a recruiting trip to Clemson. I was like, if you don't think Ryan day didn't talk shop with Dabo Sweeney, you're crazy. Like they absolutely did. Yeah. Be, Why would you, you don't know that. Why would you say, because I have common sense. Like those two guys got in a, got probably sat down in Dabo's office and talked to what ifs. Um, and every coach does it. So anyways, but that's beside the point. So thank you for the compliment. What would I think if Cincinnati left the Big 12 and was offered an opportunity to join the Big 10? Um, to be completely honest with you, it would scare the living bejeebus out of me. <laughs> um, Ohio State has had free run of the state since Woody Hayes was coach in the 40s mm -hmm. since then. And we have benefited from that with eight national championships – Seven since then, since then. First one was Paul Brown, uh, which name you're well familiar with. Um, so having someone inside the border, even though you're from the state of Cincinnati, inside the border would scare me to death that all of a sudden the recruiting privileges that we have with most of the kids who grow up in the state could be could be lost in just one generation. It takes one generation of losing mm -hmm. or not being the same at the top for that to shift. We experience, we've experienced that to a smaller degree with our neighbors to the north, and they're not even in the same state. We lost the running back from Cincinnati in last year's recruiting class. He went north, uh, someone oh. who we were trying to recruit. So imagine not only that but then having to deal with the fact that those cincinnati kids are like well why would i leave i could stay on campus i could drive 15 minutes to home mom can cook me a home cooked meal and i wouldn't have to go down i-71 and i can enjoy all the benefits of the big 10 and everything and not even have to leave the state of cincinnati mm -hmm. that would scare me to death so that would be my answer and i think you Cincinnati moving to the Big Ten, if that would happen, would hurt Ohio State basketball even more. I think that there could be an opportunity there for a lot of fans who are Ohio State basketball fans could flip. And again, it could just take mm -hmm. one generation because Cincinnati basketball has literally more tradition than Ohio State basketball does. <laughs> so. That's my answer to that. That's my honest, honest answer. And again, I can just see the comments filling up with people thinking I'm crazy. But we, that's, that is the worst possible scenario if that were to happen. So that's why I say I'm one of those fans who doesn't want to see Cincinnati in the Big Ten for that reason and that reason alone. I hear you. I, I, one more question here for you. I, I appreciate you taking uh, time to, to answer that for me and a little, a little hypothetical here. But uh, as uh, – our two basketball teams have the potential to meet in the NIT championship this year. Really? Even though I even know this. Ohio State's on the other side of the bracket. Um, Xavier lost to Georgia. Sucks to be a Xavier fan. So Ohio State won't get to play Xavier uh, in the third round uh, if possible. But uh, I would 
love to see uh, an all Ohio NIT, even though it's not the national championship, we'll settle for an NIT game if we can. But I was I want to know your thoughts on, on more of a basketball angle. Um, there's been a, a lot of talk around here, a lot of speculation, mainly, mainly probably from the fans of an maybe a all Ohio or all Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, uh, MTE events, multiple, mm. multiple team event t- towards the beginning of the year where you have UC, Ohio state, Indiana, Notre Dame, uh, Louisville, UK, whatever other teams that you have there, maybe it um, rotates uh, which school hosts it every year or something, or maybe you can go to uh, a neutral side if, if there is such a thing that exists. But what do you think Ohio State fans, uh, basketball fans, oh, you think they'd be in support of that? Sign us up, dude. Somebody's going to okay. make that happen. Yeah. So, like, here's the thing. Like, I'm a huge college basketball fan, uh, basketball junkie. Like, I watch a ton of college football, and it's because who doesn't, right? I mean, everybody does. Yeah. I You see less of that in college basketball, and you see a lot more Ohio State fans they don't even pay attention until football's over. And then it's like, oh, well, how's good the basketball team? Oh, they're not doing very good. I, they don't even care. So yeah. that's what we suffer with as, as Ohio State fans when it comes to our basketball program. But I, like, like I'm one of those guys who watches Cincinnati Xavier every year. I'm like, let's see who's going to fight this year, right? Like, I mean, right. that's, it's like, I, again, I had, I had that upbringing. I had that understanding with Huggy Bear. Of, of that rivalry and things of that nature. Of course, being in the Big Ten, we hate Indiana. Uh, just the Hoosiers are losers. That's what we kind of look at. <laughs> Purdue is probably, in our region, the best basketball program in the last 30 years, consistently-wise. Mm-hmm. Um, so you would have to include them in that. But yeah. if there was something on that level to where you had like a – eight team region invitational the, the the thing is is you wouldn't be able to have teams from the same conference in that tournament you would have yeah. to so like one year you might have indiana the next year you might have purdue the next year you might have ohio state but yes sign me up for this let me know where we can petition this thing um that sounds amazing i absolutely love that let's let's get miami of ohio in there to be an uh, auto dub yeah. for somebody every year uh, put Cincy in there, Xavier, Ohio State. Yeah, you know, I mean yeah, Kent State. Yeah. I mean they were. I mean they were decent this year. There's. Yeah. If you want to make it all Ohio? There's enough different conferences. We Akron's in the NCAA like tournament, and exactly. we're not. So I mean, yeah, exactly. get, yep. get the Fighting LeBrons in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, no, this that sounds amazing, dude. Let's make this happen, brother. That is. I'm all for it. Not, the money that the the money that could be made for that campus or that region or that state for that weekend would be astronomical and because it would be early in the season mm-hmm. and locally everybody would go to it i mean uh, another team what we've not mentioned yet if you have uc osu dayton akron kent state miami wh- whoever you get six teams just right there and that's gonna that's gonna put butts in seats without a doubt oh yeah absolutely that is phenomenal idea let's make it happen great brandon i'm giving you credit for that we'll call <laughs> it the uh the uh uh oh the college huddle invitational oh oh there we go little little tease for you in the biz what they call <laughs> that where can everybody find your podcast my man so the podcast is everywhere um it is uh on it's a little different well I, there's another uh great uc podcast um called cincy slangin that we are in uh close cahoots with uh, together, we are the Katz Keller Social Club. Katz Keller is a bar that is on campus that you can actually visit while you're at a UC Bearcats game. So we took our name from that. So on YouTube, it's the Katz Keller Social Club is the channel. But uh, on all social media, it is at Go Bearcats, which is right there beside my name on the screen. Beautiful. Go check it out, everybody. Definitely worth a listen. Uh, Brandon, thank you so much for coming on. Please like, share, subscribe, do all those great things. Let everybody know. Uh, uh, believe it or not, next week, I'm, we're going back north. We're going to Toledo. We're going to do be doing this episode with a Toledo podcast and talking about what is a literal border that there was a war on. Yes. yes. Militias <laughs> literally went to war there in Toledo 
and thus was born the greatest rivalry in all of sports. So we're going to go in and talk a little bit about that region and what it's like there when it comes to recruiting and the border war with Ohio State uh, going on up there in Toledo. So make sure you check that out next week. Thank you so much, Brandon. Appreciate it. Yes, we'll sir. see Thank if you, you know how to do this. OH! You see. Oh, he knew how to do it. He knew how to do it. Good night, everybody.